welcome back to my channel is another video from prime side and if you're just joining us on this channel please do well to hit the subscribe button turn your notification bell so you can always get my videos whenever i drop them i've been seeing several experiments being done on youtube and google on how to you know test for harmful substances on your cream using hypo uh, bleach or what kind of whatever kind of bleach containing hypochlorite and using it to test if the lotion or the cream oxidizes and if it oxidizes it means that it contains harmful substances especially hydroquinone because hydroquinone is um, an unstable ingredient which oxidizes really fast on exposure to hair or on exposure to such inorganic substances now I want to clear that air because I love hypothesis so much. I love experiments. I love making sure to confirm some things before assuming them to be so. So, first of all, before we um, go into the experiment um, proper, I would like to let you know that um, hydroquinone is not a so bad ingredient as people actually trade it. Hydroquinone is not bad that much it is the misuse of hydroquinone that is bad hydroquinone also has been made to fight skin conditions like hyperpigmentation and to fit spots although it is not a naturally derived ingredient it is not a naturally derived ingredient that's why it seems like many people trade from it it has similar properties to some other naturally derived ingredients like alpha butene, logic acid. It's not really a bad ingredient. Even our naturally derived ingredients, if you misuse them like hydroquinone, you also get some funny side effects like green veins, dark knuckles and likes. Yeah. So you have to use them in order. So what I'm trying to um, clarify here is that the hypo test or whatever, you adding chlorine or you adding hypo you are um, you adding the bleach test or whatever should I say? The you adding hypo or jig or bleach or whatever kind of bleach to your product, to your um, lotion to uh, satisfy whether it contains harmful substances or hydroquinone is really not a test to use enough evidence that your product contains harmful substances. And also, if you add this um, bleach or whatever so ingredient that contains oxidizing ingredients ingredient that can actually oxidize on exposure to hair it will oxidize really fast and it doesn't mean it contains harmful substances i don't know if you get me now ingredients like alpha um ingredients like um um ingredients like vitamin c l-ascorbic acid actually it's an unstable yeah. ingredient ingredient like kojic acid is Really unstable. Ingredient like deoxyabutene is actually unstable, especially when it's a water formulation. It's an oil soluble ingredient. It's an oil soluble ingredient. So, but you can use it. It doesn't mean you can use it in creams, and creams contains water as well. So, in, in formulations like that, it can really, really oxidize. Like it can destabilize on that kind of formulation. So, if you have this kind of formulations and you test them with bleach or whatever. And they oxidize you wouldn't want to say you not use them because they are uh, let me say they contain harmful substances i don't know because i tried to experiment this i really don't know the hypothesis behind that experiment but i tried to experiment this by myself and the result turned out to be um i'll share the result with you i'll share the experiment with you as so well. so i'm going to be using I'm going to be using my own cream made from um, the oxyabutene, the cream containing water, which actually decompose really fast on exposure to hair. And then I'm going to be using other naturally uh, based cream uh, lotions like PS Baby Lotion, which you and I know it doesn't really contain harmful substance. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, known products to contain um, what is it called? Hydroquinone so that we see if hydroquinone is really going to oxidize well this is for my own experiment you may have a different experiment you may have a different um a view from this so but i'm only sharing this at least to educate people who would have you know who would be using 
harmful substances who would be using a product containing harmful substances and they think they are good to go because it did not oxidize not all harmful substances can oxidize and another and another thing here too is um, aside hydroquinone in your cream there are other substances that can actually be harmful to you aside hydroquinone there are so many other substances that can be harmful to your skin aside hydroquinone so you're not only testing to get hydroquinone because it oxidizes but what happens to the other harmful substances that do not oxidize how do you get to know that in your product many um skincare formulators both um local and international both um, um known well known and, and not so known uh, formulators they actually do not put all their ingredients on the ingredients list of their labels they do not put all the ingredients the exact ingredient because they do not want their products to be adulterated or copied or whatever so they will actually put some but most times the main ingredient they won't put it here so actually you wouldn't even know if you give if this product contains harmful substances that you may not know so um one thing i will talk about uh, I'll talk about how you can actually devoid yourself of this kind of substance. But first, let's get into our experiment. I'll be experimenting with different cream and I'll be adding this bleach to it. And then so you see. So here is my experiment sheet and I'm going to be using different creams here and adding hypo on them to see how they react. The first cream I'm using here is my Pears Baby. And I'm going to be labeling this so that we don't get confused along the way. So here is my sample A. And then the second cream i'll be using here is the cream i made myself with the oxyabotene a face cream and i know that the oxyabotene actually will really oxidize but let's see this so this is my sample b my own face cream with the oxyabotene and then my sample c is going to be a plain cream i made just a base cream with no active ingredients in it let's see if a plain cream with no ingredients will still oxidize okay so this is my sample c of course there is no active ingredients but i don't think it should oxidize in any way then the next cream i'm going to be using here is one caro something cream containing hydroquinone it is well labeled here that it's containing hydroquinone and that is why we added it here in this experiment so that we see how much it oxidizes and so here this is my sample d a cream a face cream containing hydroquinone so the next cream i'll be using here is a known cream containing kojic acid this cream is containing kojic acid according to the label and then i'm going to make this my sample e do not forget ordinarily that kojic acid is also an oxidizing agent well the last cream i'll be using here is the popular bb cream that is really nice i think this cream is nice although i don't know everything that con that it contains now according to the uh, label it contains normal plain ingredients and no serious active ingredients as that so here is my sample a b c d e and f please take note of all the samples and then we are going to be adding our ipo in drops on each of them and then i'm going to be mixing them together and then i will leave them for three days to see whether they oxidize okay remember that the active ingredient of the hypo is the sodium hypochlorite so i'm adding a drop on the ps baby cream and mixing together to see how it looks i'm adding to the sample b which is my face cream containing deoxy abotene powder and you can see that it's changing color just immediately well that's fine let's continue here is my sample c which is my cream base and does not contain anything get me it does not contain any ingredient aside the normal emulsions and water and oils for making the base cream so this is my sample c and we're going to see if this oxidizes and the next is my sample d which clearly contains hydroquinone remember that most people do this test because they want to test for hydroquinone because they think hydroquinone will oxidize okay so here i have some drops too in my hydroquinone cream and here is what it looks like right now what i noticed here is that the color changed from the pink color to plain white color but let's see if, it's oxi if it will oxidize as well and then onto my sample e which contains kojic acid see how the drop changed the color immediately kojic acid 
is not to be joked with when it comes to exposure with air or any other in inorganic substances because it will oxidize and here is my sample air which we really don't know what exactly is in it it's not stated it's uh, it only has just plain ingredients in its label and here is what it looks like right now so see how the experiment is remember i told you kojic acid deoxyabutene i don't have a cream containing elascobic acid i would have also tried that here to see how much it oxidizes anyways let's see how this looks after three days so after three days after three days here's what we got on our experiment sheet here's what we got on our experiment sheet i don't know if you can see this Remember, this is our PSBB. This is my cream that I made with um, deoxyapatine. This is the base cream that contains nothing at all. This is the well-known cream that contains um, hydroquinone. This is another cream that contains kojic acid. This is another cream that does not contain, that does not show uh, whatsoever to contain any form of bad ingredients but here is it it did not um, oxidize really well but the side of it actually oxidized so this is the sheet this is um our experiment sheet and you can see how this really oxidized if i had not made made this cream by myself i would have i would have been like oh jeez this cream is harmful and if you have done this test at home, thinking that it will certify whether the ingredient it will certify if the product has uh, harmful substances, you would have thrown this cream away, thinking it will harm your skin. Also, if you look very well, you see that PS it oxidized a bit, and it doesn't show because we all know that PS baby does not contain any Okay, and even look at the cream, the cream base that does not contain any substance. Then look at. The one that actually is written hydroquinone. Look how it is. It is written hydroquinone at the label. This is purely kojic acid, which was written kojic acid on the label. And as you can see, kojic acid will actually oxidize. It doesn't mean that this product is fake or whatever. And also, this product can also contain some other harmful substances that you may not know. So, what I'm trying to prove here is that. This exam, um, this test does not really certify if your product has uh, skin damaging ingredients or not. Product ingredients may be unstable, and instability does not guarantee your product to be unsafe. Okay, it does not guarantee that your products are unsafe. So I'm trying to clear that air. So here's what we got. Here's what we got. So, like I said, you may not be able to know physically if it actually does contain harmful ingredients. Um, but reading the description will actually let you know. Like the ones that contains hydroquinone is actually not a choice. Except probably you want to clear some stuff and you just want to use it for a, um, for a very short time. If you are using hydroquinone containing creams for a long term you're damaging your skin trust me and also you also check out for some of the ingredients there are some ingredients i would write some of the ingredients on the screen that when you see them on your creams you should actually know that they are not safe for your skin but also some people will still add some ingredients that are, that are bad some ingredients that would likely damage your skin and they will not place it on your description. The only thing I would let you know is watch out, check for reviews. Um, very soon I'll be, I'll be doing some reviews here. So you, in case for those of you who do not want to, you know, formulate by yourself, or if you do not want to make your own products, if you don't want to use the locally called, the so-called organic product, and you want to use store-bought product, I may likely start reviewing some good products that you would want to use i would i may likely start reviewing that um also check out for reviews so you know creams and stuff that are actually good go online to browse about these things go, go on google browse about these things see reviews too under their website see reviews in their websites to know whether 
your products are worth using or not. And also, one other thing is, when using the product, check your skin. I wonder why people actually allow their skin to deteriorate totally before the raise an alarm. When you use a product and you see that it's whitening you too fast, like whitening you within seven days, you should be cautious. It's not a safe cream. It is not a safe cream. A good cream, a good cream that is safe would not whiten your skin in seven days okay it is not going to whiten forget natural now organic or whatever whatever you are buying if it's whitening your skin in in seven days or less it is wrong it is very very wrong it will not it's not a good product okay and also if you start seeing noticing that after using the particular cream you start getting um stretch marks or whatever you may likely stop it before it gets worse. You don't have to let your skin totally deteriorate before you stop using them. Okay, and also there are some cream that actually react really fast on your skin. Like when you immediately you start using them, you start breaking out, you start getting eczema and all that. You have to watch out for the cream you use on your skin before you use them. Okay, and also you can do a patch test. You can do a patch test of your skin, like. You start rubbing it on a particular part of your body to see whether your skin reacts to it or how your skin is able to react to it before you can start using it all over your body. Well, check for reviews, check for check on their website, and you likely get clues to good creams that you can use. But however, you just have to check and monitor your skin, which is a good because some creams might not be good for for Mr. A, and then that same cream will be good for Mr. B. So reviews may actually not help in that way. But when you use it, you have to monitor your skin. Check if your skin is actually accepting the cream, the product or not. If not, then you have to stop it immediately. If yes, then you just have to stick to it. So that's that. And so I don't know if this video clarifies enough that um, the, um, oxidizing is not, does not mean, oxidizing uh, a product oxidizing does not mean it contains harmful substances okay and also um another question there that i was asked is if your cream oxidizes if it's safe enough to use if your cream oxidizes it's still safe to use but it will not be effective because it has lost that particular ingredient that oxidizes. it will not be because sometimes you may be using your lotion and after some time you find out that your lotion has gone brown or um, the mouth of the lotion, you find out that it's becoming brown, kind of. That's because that mouth, that particular mouth that got, that got brown has been exposed to air and if there's an oxidizing ingredient in it, it will actually lose its potency to actually destabilize. So if it loses its potency, it means it's not going to be effective, not like it's going to be harmful on the skin. So, yeah. So I, I hope I've been able to communicate this to you. We'll be getting more of this kind of information so stay tuned stay tuned to this channel subscribe like share and send these messages across to your friends as well so that they know this so you can do an experiment and trust me if you do an experiment to some of these harmful substances you find out that they don't oxidize and you'll be happy like oh i can use it something like skin free milk will not oxidize and skin free milk is bottled harmful substances in one bottle i'm sorry to say that but it's the truth many people would not believe me or many people would not agree but however it's the simple truth that's why most of these ingredients you don't see their ingredient list on their label and any any product you don't see their ingredient list on their label you have to dread from it it is really 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 scary you have the right to know what's in your product, the product you are using. Okay, so I hope this video makes sense. And if it does, please give me a thumb up. It helps me to grow this channel. And also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We actually drop tips like this every day on Instagram and on Facebook. I hope to see you in my next video. But until then, take care and bye.